Yeah, one. he wasn't one of the good guys. That's right. right on the outside, this is Pannon. Steal by Fridge. Go Fridge. Go Pending. Got the basket. Sparrow. Go Tended. The good defensive play by Joe Frizz has made it 8 6. Villanova. Good anticipation. This is why you don't want to go. Leave your feet to make the pass. If you want to pull it back, it's too late once you open a year. Nice defensive play, but no question about the call. There's the pressure, the attempt to double the ball by West Virginia this time. Both teams pressuring. All right, running West Virginia looking for a tie. Frizz. Both clubs are really hopped up. They really are moving. Sinkowitz on the right side. Penetrate, got it inside. And Pannon gets his first two points of the game. Nice pass by Sinkowitz. Bob and I commented a lot about that youngster's court sense last night. He really is a smart player, Bob. Yes, he is. Excellent shooter. Has a traveling violation, no question. Good call. Sometimes you can get hopped up too much, Bob. Uh, well, it'll take a while for that adrenaline we were talking about to kind of ease just a bit and the players to start, you know, getting back their poise. You're absolutely right. They come out of that locker room, they rip those doors down, getting out with the saliva dripping out of the corners <laughs> of their mouth. And that, you know, you don't always function at your best when you're that high, but uh, defensively, they're really working at it so far. Well, that happened last night, really, for uh, Greg Vance. Oh, good play. Oh, uh, is that a fine play? Rebound by Collins uh, as they blow the layup. That's a shame. A little pick and roll move. Both teams now have taken a shot at blowing a layup. Last night in the semifinals against Rutgers, Vance, the number one rebounder for West Virginia, came out so fired up he got three quick fouls. Well, this is a problem for West Virginia. Uh, Villanova, a better shooting team, both from the field and from the free throw line. They outshoot by about nine percentage points. So. We said this last night, the same thing applies. If it goes down to the wire, Villanova would have an edge on the line. Fading jump shot. A battle on the boards. Tipped out, picked up by Frizz, who got it to Collins. Pump it up. Good and job. Collins with a left hand. What a shot over Bradley. And it's a 10-8 game. Villanova's lead is cut to two. We have pressure in the backcourt. He gave the head and shoulder fake in the traffic. And that's exactly what you want to do when you're in the middle of the pack. You've got to fake a few times. Pannon misses his shot, and over the shoulder, Aaron, Aaron Howard over the top. Collins a good position, foul on Howard. And West Virginia will come down now with a chance to tie again. There it is. Here's the penetration. Missed jump of Howard, as you can see, trying to keep it alive. Gives Zolt Collins a, a shot there in the back of the head. 15 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Good ball game. For the Eastern 8 Championship, it's 10 for Villanova. Good pass. Lowe's well, more well, underneath to Todd. I think Todd was looking for the shot. Except that Lowe's threw the fastball. He had about a 15-foot pass. I'll tell you, the key to a good pass is obviously not only accuracy, but the speed of it. It has to be handled. And you got to know when you're passing those big guys from 15 feet away, they can't always handle that fast one. No one has more of a right to talk about passing than Mr. Cousy. And inside, what do we have? Like a foul. foul. It's going to be on Greg Nance as Alex Bradley tried to take him to the hoop. A quick move. First foul on Nance. Foul is on Greg Nance, number 24. With and we're going to have a timeout now with a score. Villanova 10 and West Virginia 6 in the first half. Let's pause for this message. Back in Pittsburgh, the Eastern Eight Finals, Jim Carvelis, Bob Cousy, and Fast Diddy Alexander on hand. 10-8 Villanova on top of West Virginia. Shooting percentages, Bob Cousy, pretty good. Yeah, both things, especially in, uh, in regard to what we said about the defense. You know, the defense has been extremely active and aggressive. Both teams showing the changing defense we talked about. The only surprise is uh, Villanova seems to want to play an up-tempo game. Uh, talked to Raleigh before the game. It, we, we both agreed it was in his favor to try to control tempo, not play slow down, but, you know, at their pace. And it looks like their pace is uh, run and shoot right now. Well, maybe he was afraid you'd tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sigowitz outside to Lowe's Moore. Talk to the bad guys. Excuse huh? me, no, that's Mr. Sparrow. Sparrow and Sigowitz, the back line. Inside to Pannone, knocked away. Good defensive play by Nance. Two threes on. Villanova trying to get it inside. That's where their strength is. Howard, Bradley, Pannone. Oh, what a tough shot. What a tough <laughs> angle, and Aaron Howard hit the bottom of the net. 12-8. Collins underneath. Stays from going out of bounds. It's intercepted by Sparrow. Going over the other way. Sparrow pulls up. Off Nance comes to Lowe's Moore behind his back and a whistle and a foul is going to be called against Sparrow. Oh, first and ten on that one. Sparrow went for the steal when Lowe's Moore put it behind his back. Good play, but Moore protected the ball extremely well. Take a look. Lowe sees the pressure coming, so he throws it behind his back, tries to protect it by keeping his body between Sparrow and the ball. And he picks up the foul on Sparrow, his first foul. Team second. 14 and a half minutes to play in the first half. 12 8 ball game in favor of Villanova over West Virginia playing for the Eastern 8 Conference Championship. Both teams looking to go inside against the respective two three zone. Sparrow knocked it away from Nance as he sagged off his man Frizz. Sparrow. Sinkowitz almost walked. Maybe he did. Uh, I think Good he play walked. by Nance. He didn't walk, he ran, I'll tell you. Frizz. Rebound to Nome. Well, Boy, run and shoot. Both clubs well, just flying down now, but no one's making the shot. Inside to Bradley, and the block was made by Todd. Great defensive oh, play wow. by Todd. Collins colliding with Pannone, and here comes Lowe's Moore. Ooh, the two big men uh, certainly did collide. The elbows were flying. We had a little of that last night, as you remember, James, and it got a little out of hand. That time it was unintentional, but uh, a lot of impact. Lowe's Moore is fouled by Howard. That should be his second foul. Speaking of the problems uh, we had last night, Marty Karen comes in the game. Marty, he was involved in a lot of that ruckus. Yeah, I guess he was the original offender, although uh, the first one was not seen. Oh, Lollinger was the one who retaliated and got thrown out. Nance missed it, and the rebound to Bradley has been outstanding. Alex Bradley's been some player on both ends of the court early on in this game. Uh, Granger's in the game at Sinkowitz. Granger number 10 for Villanova. Huh? And there's Mr. Spiro. Uh, West Virginia 3-3. Three, three. The front line is really collapsing. They're giving the outside shot in favor of trying to stop that inside game. But I don't know if they've read that scouting report. Sinkowitz and Sparrow can burn you from outside as Sparrow just did that. Nance rolls it off the rim. The battle. Collins battling with Pannone out of bounds. Off Collins. Now that's a pretty big front line for Villanova with Karen and Pannone and Bradley up there, Bob. Well, that was one category where West Virginia figured to have an edge in rebounding, so Massimino has to make the necessary adjustments and maybe playing the two big guys together is one of them. Generally, they do not. They sub for each other. Ranger inside, Pannone and Pannone. Not a bad freshman, huh? Whew. Not a bad freshman at all. Uses his body very effectively under there to uh, protect the ball and get the shot off. Bob, I talked to some of the assistant coaches from Villanova during the afternoon. They said, and that really impresses him about the youngsters. He's so intelligent. He's a really a fundamentally very sound player. Knows how to use his body. Knows how to play basketball. Foul against Villanova. Underneath, he used his body there, except to take a blow. <laughs> Collins gave him a shot. But the foul is going to be on Pannone, I believe. All right, it is against Pannone, and we have a timeout from Pittsburgh with a score in the first half. Alexander, the Eastern Eight Championship. What a job this man has done, Gail Catlett, bringing this West Virginia club around just at the right time, getting the club hot late in the season. Here's a long jumper Woo. by Lowe's Moore. Lowe's Moore makes it 16-10 Villanova by half a dozen. That's four points for Lowe's Moore. Yeah, we said the Villanova defenses were going to key on Lowe's, but if they are, they're going to have to find him a little sooner than that. He is a constant threat with, with uh, great range, as he just displayed. Bradley missed it. And here's Lowe's Moore with Sparrow on him. Well, now it's his own. It's his own. Frizz, he can shoot it. Long rebound. Collins picked it up. Keeps it alive for West Virginia. West Virginia continues to assert itself on that offensive board. They well, really got the second Bob, and third opportunity. Yep. 
Blows more. Bullseye! Well, I think we're going to see some adjustments in a hurry by Ali Massimino. Uh, the two, three is fine, but you got to know where those shooters are. And it's, as we said a moment ago, especially number 11 for uh, West Virginia. They're playing Karen in deep. And a jump shot in the right corner by Sparrow. That's six points for Sparrow. They're playing Penelon up on top, and they're playing Karen low. They're playing that high-low post on offense, Villanova. 18-12. The Wildcats are going over on top of the Mountaineers in West Virginia. It's been an exciting tournament. Now West Virginia doing somewhat the same thing. They got Collins up high on the line, as you can see. He turns around and tries to hit those two low guys. They're, they're pretty poised as they're displaying right now, much more so than last night, frankly, where they were looking for that first shot quickly. I think uh, I think they feel they have to kind of beat Villanova at their own game, and this is Villanova's thing. They're a very intelligent team, under control, good shot selection, and West Virginia, frankly, is uh, displaying exactly those qualities so far. That was a three-second violation. Sinkowitz comes back in the lineup, replacing Granger, and Howard comes up front, replacing Kieran. That's Lolly Massimino. You just saw stand up. Canon still playing on the outside. Now he's inside. Sparrow couldn't get it to him. Sinkowitz, a good passer, gets it to Sparrow. And Sparrow stays hot. Well, I, you know, I'm still surprised that they're collapsing to that degree and giving those outside shots. Believe it or not, the other kid, Sinkowitz, was better than Sparrow. So Sparrow's got four from out there already, four baskets. And, 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 and uh, Sinkowitz got a one shot, Bob, but it's a really good percentage shot. You're Absolutely. talking about 15, 14 foot jump shot. All they're doing is making three or four exchanges, and with every exchange, the defense sinks a little lower, and they get a little closer to the basket for the outside shot. You're exactly right. It's like a 16 footer, and that's like shooting ducks in a barrel for those two. That's teams. right. Well, I think they're they're very concerned about the freshman Pernone inside. I think they really want to help out with well, him. Well, it's good thinking, but as we said, you've got to expand that defense when it's necessary and and collapse it when it's required. It's 20 to 12 now. Villanova on top. A lot of fans in Philadelphia watching tonight, hoping the Wildcats can pull off another Eastern Eight championship. Again, good poise and patience being displayed by West Virginia. You can see they're taking their time. And that's about unusual, especially for a team that's eight points down, Jim. Usually they want to get it back quickly. I think it's unusual to see two clubs playing such a big game and both having the composure that they have. Usually the kids want to run out and, and through the roof and out the door, but all these clubs want it badly, but they're really playing with some class. Ooh. Nice Collins. play there. Good movement without the ball. One pass too many, however. All right, Spiro in a broken field. Sinkowitz underneath. Aaron Howard. Boy, he really had a poor sack. There's some tough defense going on under there. I seen a double pump move. That was a triple pump move by <laughs> Aaron Howard. Tough shot. Well, I was just going to say the same thing. I was going to say bad shot. That's the kind, you know, the coach jumps up and says, don't shoot that beautiful. <laughs> oh, oh. Lowe's Moore now has eight. His counterpart, Sturrow, also has eight. A foul is going to be called off the ball against West Virginia. It might be on Greg Nance. Let's see. If it is, it'll be two on Nance. Yes, two on Nance. He had three early in last night's semifinal game against Rutgers and had to sit out a while. In fact, Nance has the only two fouls called against uh, West Virginia, and Howard has the only two, uh, has two of the three fouls called against Villanova. Sinkowitz, he can shoot. And now, Karen is over the top of Lowe's Moore. Lowe's Moore at good position, and Karen. Good call. Came over the top. Yep, good call. He caught the big guy going in. Here's the Sinkowitz shot from the corner. Watch Cannon top the middle of your screen. He comes in about the same time as the quick rebound to Moore and just had no opportunity to get out of the way. There's a timeout with 8.34 to play in the first half of the Eastern 8 Championship here in Pittsburgh. The score, Villanova 20 and West Virginia 14. Broadway this Sunday night on TV2. Mm, with time on my hands. Here's a 14 in the Eastern 8 championship game. Gail Catlett there in the middle of the screen just uh, 
giving some instructions to his charges. Well, no doubt I about think, that. Yeah, that's been demonstrated all week long. Uh, they may very well come here to win three, I'll tell you. Finished seventh in the league. Big underdogs coming into this tournament. West Virginia Peter. Booster is yeah. yelling before the game. Here's the rebound. Yep. And another over foul on Nance. That's three fouls on Nance, so he does the same thing he did last night, get three first-half fouls. And again, as happened last night, he will be replaced. A little unusual for a junior. You know, he's just a little over-anxious. You respect the kid who follows his own shot. Generally, the man who shoots the matter of fact, is the best judge as to where that ball is going to rebound. But uh, you can't uh, knock over bodies uh, in the process. Donnie Gibson, number 32, replaces him. Donnie Gibson is a sophomore from nearby Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Woo! I believe Karen. Karen tipped that in. Muscle on the boards, and it's 22-14. Pulling over by eight. By the way, this Gibson's a fine player. Don't underestimate him because he's coming off the bench. Great offensive rebounder. Blows more to the baseline. Off Marty Karen. Collins took it away. Oh, wow. Collins what? up over Pannone. What and there's play. the offensive rebounder you were talking about, Bob Cousy. Absolutely, but I'll tell you, give Collins the credit for that. Old Collins ripped it away from Karen, who had the inside position, and kept it alive for Gibson to finish off. Beautiful. Villanova by half a dozen. Gibson, who just came in the game, got that basket. As Bob Cousy told you, he was good on the offensive board. Sinkowitz from the outside. Bullseye, Sinkowitz. And it's 24-16 now. Villanova again regains an eight-point lead. First two points for Sinkowitz. Over 16,100 here last night to set up Pittsburgh, the city of Pittsburgh record for a college basketball game. And they announced before the game that the tournament will be held here again next year. What's even more impressive, as far as I'm concerned, is we have a near sellout tonight with neither Pittsburgh team in the tournament. That's for sure. And now Stinkowitz ties up Gibson. to see what offensive rebounding is all about. Watch Collins' move. He's going to come in from the weak side and his lows more miss. Watch him rip that away from uh, Karen. Just turns and uses his body, pivots away from the pressure, puts it back up, and here's Gibson finishing it off. Fine play by the big guy. All right, we're back to the line action. 24-16. Villanova over West Virginia. Good. Off the rim. Oh, look at the board was tied. And Todd came over the top and drew the foul. Well, number 33 of West Virginia's, we said a moment ago, starting to assert themselves on that offensive board. Uh, of course, Nance picked up two fouls doing it, but watch, here's the shot from outside. Bobby, I was gonna say, excuse me, you talked about discipline, all right, and fundamentals. Did you see that Villanova club block out? As soon as that oh, shot yeah. went out, but they blocked people. The only way they were gonna get the ball was to come over the top. Bradley, missing inside. Oh, Boy, a lot of action in the Picking up under those boards. The boys are getting mean. No, you're absolutely right. The only difficulty, both teams playing zone, as we said, it is much more difficult, it takes much more concentration to box out when you're playing zone, than obviously when you're playing man-to-man, -man, when you've already got the individual assignment, all you have to do is try to make contact. In a zone posture, you've got to, you know, find the man, and a little more difficult to go. Greg Jones has come in now for Joe Frizz. Here's Jones, number 12. Knocked away. Karen came over the top of Gibson. I believe they've got the foul on Marty Karen. Yes, two fouls on Marty Karen. In the foul department, Nance has three for Villanova. He's now a second for West Virginia on the bench. Bradley doesn't have any. All right, Howard's got two, and Karen's got two. I believe that's a 16 foul, at least unofficially, on Villanova. 14 fouls on. Uh, West Virginia. Gibson goes up high. That's the little jumper. Gibson's come in off the bench replacing Greg Nance, who's contributed two baskets already. It's a six-point lead for Villanova. Four points for Gibson. Sparrow. Both teams using identi identical, excuse me, defensive alignment so far. 2-2-1 two, two, full court and 2-3. Oh, Russell Todd. Todd blocked the shot on Pannone from behind. 
Ooh, take a look at Todd come in from behind and uh, get a piece of Panon. Just about ready to shoot the, there's the good head and shoulder fake. That takes care of his own man, Gibson, who's in front of him, but it doesn't take care of Russell Todd. Gets in there and gets a piece of that ball. Nice block. Greg Jones drew a foul on that play. He tried to get that deflection away from Karen, and he drew a foul. That's on Greg Jones, who just came in the game for Frizz. Sinkowitz thought about the shot. Jones made him forget it. And now it's Bradley from the outside. Alex Bradley, who was hot early in the game, gets two more. He's got eight points. That's what makes Alex so effective, by the way, Jim. Uh, we saw him go inside and get three hoops, and that time we saw him face about 16 and knock it off. We had two great. Good rebound by Todd. Boy, he's tough on the boards. West Virginia's tough on the boards. Knocked away from behind. The good play was made by Sparrow, who came back and knocked exactly. it away. Exactly. Exactly. He's the one who finished off the layup. I tried to on the other end. He got back 94 feet. Excellent pursuit. And still caught Lowe's Moore. I'll tell you, not many people have catch Moore from behind. Here's Jones. Eight turnovers for West Virginia, only two for Villanova. That's an interesting start because West Virginia only had eight turnovers all of last night. They got 450 left and have already got to the first half. Matched the turnover total for the entire game. Is it traveling? Yes. Double I'll tell you, the entire West Virginia coaching staff stood up. That took place right in front of them. They want to make sure the referee didn't miss that. That was double dribble. There it is. Sparrow gets count. One. Oh, can't put it to the floor again. You've already had one. That's a no-no. Jones on the outside. It's 26-20. Villanova's lead over West Virginia's been cut to half a dozen. Pressure. And they handle the pressure well. Yep. I started to say a while ago, both teams using 2-2-1 two, full. They're tapping out of it and falling down in the 2-3 zone. What a nice pass. Play. It was before yep. the basket, before the shot. John Pannon came up high. Gee, is he mobile for a man his size? What a great pass he made, Bob. Yes, he did. That's what I'm saying. You don't, you, you really don't expect the guy, uh, especially a freshman, obviously, that size and that bulk to uh, be as mobile and as accurate with his passing, and he's got the good vision to go with it. Todd drew the foul. Mulquin, Mike Mulquin comes in the game, replacing Karen. Pannon underneath, boy, is blocked away by Gibson, and the shot. In the baseline by Sinkowitz. And it's 28-20, going over again by Collins from the outside. And the ball ripped off the board by Mulquin. Villanova looking for a 10-point lead. Sinkowitz to the baseline. Great defense on the reverse ball. We've seen a lot of block shots, Bob. You. They are really pushing it up floor, both teams. There's a timeout with 3.49 to play in the first half of a great championship game for the Eastern 8 in Pittsburgh to score. Villanova 28 and West Virginia 20. Weekends were made for Michelob. The special weekend pride of a gourmet chef. What better accompaniment than the smooth and mellow taste of Michelob? Brewed naturally with the finest ingredients and very special. Tremendous crowd here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They were, so this conference, as a matter of fact, last year was fourth amongst all the major conferences, Jim, in uh, total attendance for their playoffs. They had over 50,000 people, which I'm sure probably will be broken this year. Uh, 30 some odd thousand in the two uh, games held here in the Civic Center. Outstanding performance for a young conference. It is a young conference and a really an outstanding conference, too, when you think of a, a club four and six being here in the finals of the tournament. That's how balanced it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, took, took the baby no steps. Basket. He snuck in along that baseline, too, Alex Bradley, but he took a couple of Mickey Mouse steps there. Unfortunately, he had the good inside position. Here's the full court 2-2-1 two, two, on the part of uh, Villanova this time. They're trying to tap the ball, as you can see. Lowe's Moore handling it well, just keeping his cool, not letting the tap affect him, looking for that free man, and finally the shot. 
Wells Moore did a little pump action with the bottom of the net. 28-22. Boy, West Virginia just won't fall down here. Villanova's played super, but West Virginia's hanging in there down by half a dozen. Now it's a, it's a very well played game so far. Oh, that'll be a goal tending. It is not. Yes, yes. it is. Hal Grossman. Let's see if they make the call. Hal it's Grossman. Grossman. That's a fine call. I'll tell you. No one else saw that. Grossman looked to me like he might have been blocked out too. That's his call. He's the guy on top. Good job. No question about the call, in my opinion. 28-24 now. It's a four-point lead. Mulkwin. Mulkwin didn't make a very good pass that time. He was under, but that happens when you're under pressure. And Jones made a really good play. Just took up his arm with his back to the play and deflected the ball. Mulkwin wanted a three fine freshmen that Rally uh, recruited this year. This kid with the ball, Granger, another one. And, of course, Pannone, who he's trying to pass to and does down low. Boy, you talk about physical. <laughs> does he I'll use his body? You what. Jack Lambert doesn't hit any harder here in Pittsburgh. He reminds you a little of Tom Bullwinkle or something. <laughs> he uses that body extremely well. I'll tell you, you're not going to give him too much front when he posts up because uh, if you're going to front, you got to get completely in front. You're not going to give him any half a man stuff. He, uh, the first foul against Collins. And on the foul line. Canone averaging 14 points, two points a game. Now, from the foul line, average. He's a 69.3% foul shooter. Average, you say, for a big man. High arcing shot. He got both. And it's a 30-24 game now. Villanova by six. Pressure. They may end up with the ball. They do. Granger. Granger's tough. He's a passer, playmaker, takes over, even with Sparrow in the game as a freshman. They have three guards in. Yep. Massimino. Pano, what a nice pass. Work. Granger made the penetration. Absolutely. As soon as he drew Pannone's man, he had the pass right there. And again, Villanova grabs the eight-point lead. Well, Jones is a freshman, Greg Jones. They have a lot of confidence in him, but the double team produced a turnover. Collins rushes the rebound. Collins, what an effort. He grabbed three rebounds in that sortie. Finally was fouled as he dominated the offensive board. Okay. We talked about the offensive rebounding by West Virginia. Here's a good example of it. Collins following his own shot. Soft touch for a big guy. He doesn't knock that one in. And then hurries the layup. But look at him keep that thing alive. Offensive rebounding is not how high you jump, it's how rapidly you jump and how much you want to get that thing. you got to keep that thing alive, make up your mind to it. <laughs> what a rebound by Dixon, but he blew the shot for knowing the ball. Going over by eight over West Virginia. We have 2.15 to play in the first half. Eastern eight championship game, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jim Carvalho's Bob Cousy, Eddie Alexander. I know you got to be enjoying it. It's been a terrific game. Pinone in the lane. Bullseye! Pinone. And the freshman's got 10 points. Very tough. First defensive change by West Virginia. They went man to man from the 2 3 zone, and Villanova exploited it immediately by going low and posting Pinone, who turned around, knocked in that little jumper. Jones got it to Joe Frizz, who's in the game. Now they have three guards. Frizz, Jones, that's West Virginia, and Lowe's Moore. Jones from the outside. And the rebound, Pannone, but coming over the top. I believe they've got Gibson. Gibson coming over the top. Gibson is a great jumper, but Bob, isn't it funny? A lot of times the great jumpers get a lot of those kinds of fouls because they don't feel that they really need position to get the ball all the time. Oh, absolutely. You, you've got to work much harder for your offensive rebounding position, as you know, Jim, because the defensive man always has the inside, so you've got to learn to roll over. A lot of big guys get a little lazy and they want to reach, and that's when they pick up those cheap fouls. That, uh, we just saw it demonstrated there. Both teams, by the way, are now in a bonus situation. So Pannone with the uh, <laughs> the sky hook free throw. God, he's going to bring rain with that thing. But fine, classic release. Watch him with the nice extension, smooth shot. He's hit four in a row also, and he's got a dozen points. They give that last foul now to Collins and not to Gibson. So that'll be two fouls on Collins. He's done a great job in the middle for West Virginia. 12-point lead for Villanova. Gibson Ooh. wheeling on the inside. 
Villanova had scored eight straight points until that was stopped by that little half hook inside by Gibson to make it 36-26. Villanova by 10. Granger. Tinker. West Virginia staying in their man-to-man -man posture, trying to pressure the ball. As you can see, Lowe's Moore moving in on Granger. Yeah. I think Collins reached in. It looked that way. Again, they're giving up that low position, Jim, and if they're going to go man-to-man, -man, you cannot play behind that uh, man who's posting up. I'll tell you, you'll get burned. Because you give Bradley and Pannon the ball where they want it and alive so they can put it to the floor, they're going to destroy you. That's right. They finally did give it to Lowe's Moore. Did there was a collision right. underneath. Moore trying to sag off and help off. That's his first foul. I saw it your way, Bob. I thought that well, was got him too. I'll tell you, West Virginia is much happier that way. Yes. Yeah, that would have been the third on Collins. Pannon leaves. Mulquin comes in for Villanova, number 25. Alex Bradley, what a start he's had tonight. He's got nine points. He and Pannon have really turned it on. And Sparrow, those three have just about scored all the points. We mentioned West, uh, excuse me, Villanova's uh, free throw accuracy as a team. They're shooting 76% almost. and. Uh, so far, they're uh, shooting a thousand in this game. That really helps a club when games get down to the wire. Villanova playing awfully tough defense, I'll tell you. They have good basketball team. Yeah. They are. Ali Massimino is one of the top yeah. coaches in the country, and he he's really done it. He actually turned this game around tonight, putting the three guards in there. That's one of the things he's done. He's prepared his kids pretty darn well. Ron of the talking about this. Ron of the very sound floor. Ron of the spread offense, looking for the last shot. 15 seconds left, as you can see in the bottom of the screen. Villanova uh, went four corners, opened up that middle. And Bradley will be the recipient of a couple of free throws. Gibson drew the foul. A 12-point lead for Villanova. Alex Bradley, 6'6", 220 pounder, Long Branch, New Jersey. Actually, Villanova starts four kids from the state of New Jersey. Of course, that's where Raleigh's from. Jersey, Pennsylvania has always been an extremely productive uh, area for high school recruits, as you know, James. Georgetown, excuse me, Georgetown, well, Washington, D.C. That's right. Well, hometown. Uh, I was thinking of Georgetown because they had a fine win today, upsetting Syracuse. Tremendous win for John Thompson, another great coach, talking about great coaches. John's a good man. 13-point lead, as you know him, from the Celtics. He was a teammate of yours. Yeah. Spinning lows more. Ooh. Rebound by Bradley. One second, going to get it up. And that's it. That's the end of a Villanova first half here in Pittsburgh with a score. Villanova, 39, and the Mountaineers of West Virginia, 26. When bad weather hits Pittsburgh, a few hours extra... Like me and you, here's to friendly, honest people, solid through and through, it takes two. Here's to you. Okay, gang, here's the game plan for Junior Achievement Business Fair 80. Now, I want you to report to the Civic Arena at noon, Saturday, March 1st, for the kickoff. Now, I'll be there Saturday, and the whole JA team will be there until the final whistle at 5 on Sunday. We'll have radio and TV favorites at halftime in the top teen talent contest and continuous entertainment throughout. Now, let's show the public our best. Yeah! Come to Business Fair 80 at the Civic Arena, March 1 and 2. JA, another winning team from the area of champions. Dolores Gould, architect. What's your IQ? 138. And your EQ? EQ. Your economics quotient. Well, I don't know much about economics. Attorney Ed Denton, how high is your economics quotient? Economics? I never really had time to get into it. Lots of people, even people you'd ordinarily consider smart, have EQs that could stand improvement. How about yours? Do you know what makes the American economic system work? It's important that you do simply because we all have to make decisions about our economic system. And the more you know about it, the more you'll be able to make it work for you. To learn more about what makes the American economic system work, write for this free booklet. Write Economics, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009.
The American economic system and your part in it, it's interesting, easy reading, and an easy way to raise your EQ. The American economic system. We should all learn more about it. I'm show going on, Villanova and West Virginia fighting each other on the court in what is the Eastern Eight Championship matchup. The right to go on to the NCAA tournament. That's exactly what they're fighting for this evening here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And by the way, before we get to the coach of the year, I want to remind you that Pittsburgh and the Civic Arena will again host the Eastern Eight Championships in the 1981 season. And that's obviously great news, even though I'm sure the West Virginia folks, Mike Rice, would like to have it in Morgantown. But congratulations on being named Coach of the Year. And those out there who have listened to me chatter about you know, of course, that I think you're one of the fine gentlemen in this game. And uh, we mean that totally sincerely. Thank you, Eddie. I think uh, the award is always given to the coach that drops out the first round. Well, I'll tell you something right now. It's going to be tough for me to interview Mike Rice because uh, I enjoy this gentleman's company so much. I'm able to get into giggles, but let's talk about the first half a little bit before we get into the player of the year and the freshman of the year. Quick note, Bradley and Fanone, you faced Villanova at the Palestra. You beat them uh, rather handily considering you played on the road, and, uh, well, they're a tower of strength. Well, they're doing a great job tonight, Eddie, uh, getting the ball inside. I think their game plan is to... Uh, Keep the tempo of the game where Lowe's Moore doesn't uh, take over the ball game, but they were pressing early and he started to get and then they dropped their press. I think the fact that uh, they're keeping Lowe's Moore in a, a, a half court type offense game and the fact that uh, Villanova is getting the ball inside real well uh, and they have Sparrow and Sinkowitz to shoot it outside. So uh, it makes it very difficult to defense Villanova when they're playing as smart as they are. Okay, let's jump inside uh, Gail Catlett's pants for a moment. What are you telling the kids at halftime? Well, they have to do something. Villanova is really getting the ball where they want it. Uh, they're either going to have to pick up the tempo a little with uh, some trap presses or something like that and, uh, and pick up the tempo. It's, the game started out that way. It was going to be a high-scoring game. But, of course, uh, both coaches got a little conservative when they gave up field goals. Uh, so now it's the type of ball game that Villanova likes to play. They're, I think they're doing a much better job in their offense than uh, West Virginia is in theirs attacking the zone. You know something? You're like me. You enjoy, you enjoy watching great athletes. We've got a great athlete to take a look at right now. We're going to reckless eyeball a guy by the name of Earl Belcher. He, of course, is the player of the year in the Eastern Eight. Marvelous basketball player. You've had to go against this guy. Let's talk about it. Well, he's a, a great scoring machine. He was about the sixth leading scorer in the nation, Eddie, and uh, he's very difficult to contain, and they, uh, they do great things with him in their offense. They give him freedom to do anything he wants, so he picks up a lot of fouls. He's always putting you in Bye, foul. Ted. Go with Inside, outside, and uh, his transition is great. He gets from one end of the court to the other. So if you put a big man on him in the transition game, you can never catch up to him. If you put a smaller man on him, then they go a little slower, and he gets towards you on you there. So uh, he's a very difficult man to defense, Eddie. Bonafide pro prospect? Oh, there's no doubt about it. He can, uh, he can play with the big guys. Let's talk about a guy that I would actually take all of my money and all of my credit cards out of my pocket and pay for the opportunity to see him play. I'm talking about John Fanone. He has been some kind of sweet tonight. Well, he works very hard, Eddie, especially for a freshman. He keeps his poise. He got hit down in the face down there, and you see uh, the big tough guys don't even, they don't even <laughs> touch their jaws when that happens, and uh, he went back on defense, never let it be said that, uh, you know, he got hit, but uh, uh, he uh, shows a lot more poise now than he did early in the season on offense. He takes the good shot, and he works very hard down in the defensive end, so what more can you ask even of a senior? He's a freshman. I was going to say that. I was going to say either you stole his basketball or he just has a slow start when you beat him earlier in the year. Well, he was, that was in the, the, about the fourth, fifth game of the year, and uh, uh, he wasn't quite as poised as he was now, but uh, now he, he's, he's thinking the ball game, and they have Sparrow and Sinkowitz outside. They know how to get the ball into him, and that helps him a lot. Early in the year, they weren't doing a good job of getting the ball inside, but now they're, they're looking much better. Roley has them going pretty well. Hey, folks, you got the Goldust twins right here. Eddie Alexander and uh, Mike Rice, the coach of Duquesne. Mike, thanks for stopping by to say hi, and again, congratulations on being named coach of the year. Thank you, Eddie, and we hope to be here next year. Okay, very good. Mike Rice of Duquesne. We're going to get uh, the commander-in-chief in here right now. This is the commissioner, Leland Bird, and I know why you're smiling there are a lot of faces in this audience the last two days well we've had some great crowds Eddie but 16,000 over 16 last night and I'm guessing that we must have 13 5 or 14 in here tonight you know the 
Morgantown folks obviously one of next uh, year's championships in Morgantown but the coaches and the athletic directors I guess or the athletic directors vote on it and uh, overwhelming Pittsburgh gets it again. Well, you know, the great support here, it has been wonderful. Of course, you know, Mountain Bear fans are great. I, when I was down there, I said they're the greatest fans in the world because they really follow their team, and we've got great fans all over the league. One final thought now. You're really happy with the way things are moving as far as the East Tornado is concerned? Oh, I think we've made a lot of progress, and we're happy, and certainly we're looking forward for an expanded year next year. Our leader, folks, Leland Burr, the commissioner of the Eastern Eight. I'm Eddie Alexander. When we come back, Jim Corvallis and Bob Cousy will be back with more of the second half activity. We'll be back in just a moment. This bud's for all you guys who keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. For all the roads you ride and every place they take you to. For all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This bud's for you. It's Coleco's Electronic Hockey, Electronic Basketball, Electronic... All right, we're back here in Pittsburgh at halftime. Both clubs uh, back on the floor, warming up a 13-point lead for a Villanova club that was outstanding in that first half. And as Bob Cousy said before, West Virginia didn't play that badly. Villanova was just sensational. Outstanding half of basketball on the part of the Wildcats. Uh, I think keyed by their defense. They held their own off the boards, Jim, which I think is important. And I'll tell you, they kind of faked everybody out to begin with. They went with that full court pressure. Remember, I talked to Raleigh before the game, and he said, no, we want to control tempo. We don't want to run and shoot with him, and we don't want to let Lowe's Moore control the game. So we want to slow a little. But he came out looking like he wanted to run, and then after a few minutes, they suddenly took the pressure off, and for the most part, controlled the tempo of the game, did not allow Lowe's Moore to dominate, although the kids still got 10, did a good job. Uh, but they also, and Mike Rice said it very well, got that ball inside very effectively. So their shot selection really reflects the 55% shooting that they did from the field in the first half. And their defense, I think, reflects the 39% uh, that West Virginia only shot in that uh, they played extremely good D as well as being controlled and, uh, and effective offensively. Bob, it seems uh, to this reporter that West Virginia is going to have to really show up their defense in the second half. Well, yeah, they, they're going to, they're not only going to have to tighten it up, but I think they're going to have to gamble a little bit. Anytime you're behind, they're behind 13 at halftime. With 20 minutes of basketball against a good team who is, in fact, controlling tempo, you've got to go out and gamble a little bit, whether it's in the form of full court pressure. Now, theoretically, the more you extend your defense, whatever it happens to be, the more vulnerable it becomes. This is predicated on the speed and quickness of your athletes, but, you know, the more you go out there, why, the more it opens up opportunities for a team that has the speed and quickness that Villanova has. So we have to weigh that against the fact, at least Gail Catlett does, that he's 13 down, 20 minutes to go, must make things happen. So it's a question of, you know, what options he chooses to go to, but I think he's gonna, I think Mike Rice said it, he, you know, he's gonna have to start tapping the ball, double teaming different places uh, to uh, to create some opportunities for themselves. Well, Raleigh Massimino's troops have really done the job. Raleigh, as we've been saying, one of the outstanding coaches in the East, one of the outstanding coaches in the country. He's got a lot of things to say. Well, he's done that. Certainly has, as we said, I think, earlier. Kid is a real clutch player, good speed and quickness. He penetrates well. He has made five shots at the buzzer for the Wildcats since he's been at school. Two this year, I believe, to win ball games for them. Bob, you've been a college coach and a pro coach. And you've had clubs that have gone in at halftime with these kind of leads and important games. Is it a problem sometimes getting the kids to get back up again and not thinking they've won the game? Well, it, it is in, in a normal run of the season game. You know, uh, championship time, last game of the year, theoretically. Uh, you know, you, as a matter of fact, if anything, you have to kind of hose them down with a little cracked ice. You got to 
you know, not let him get too high for this type of a game, whether it's halftime or not. Uh, with 20 minutes to go, a team as solid as Villanova sitting on a 13-point lead, I would be amazed if they have any kind of letdown. I think it is incumbent upon West Virginia, as we said a moment ago, to do something to raise their emotional level. But I think you're going to see the same Villanova team here in the second half, unless, you know, West Virginia does something about it. All right, Nance is back in the game, playing with three fouls now to start the second half. It's Briz on the back line, along with the lows more the pass inside by Todd is deflected, then the loose ball comes up to Pannone. Pannone, Sinkowitz, yeah, Sparrow, Bradley, and Howard for Villanova. Kids Pannone. Oh, he got the shot, he took it. Got the open 12 foot, 13 foot jumper, he hit the bottom. You can't imagine how critical it is to get the first basket when you're sitting on a lead at halftime, also, psychologically. It has a heck of an effect. 15 point lead. Todd goes from the outside on the rebound. Sinkowitz with good position. Sinkowitz, I'll tell you a story about that youngster. Sinkowitz to the right side. Inside, knocked away and out of bounds. Last touch by Todd. Trying to play it into Howard. Canone. Sigowitz with the fake. Sparrow. Bradley. Collins with a strong rebound. Important here for Lowe's Moore to stay within the team concept, Jim. He cannot take it upon himself to try to get them back into the game by himself and take, you know, four shots. They need that. They need Joe Frizz to start shooting the basketball. He's a great shooter, and he's only got four points. The other one was a layup. So that's his first outside shot, and he's got to get that shot down. Key couple of minutes uh, coming up for West Virginia. Uh, Illinois on the verge there, breaking it open. Big steal, what a play. What a play. Frizz and he went behind the ball. Oh, wow. What a play by Joe Frizz. He ignites his crowd in Pittsburgh. And now it's an 11 point lead for Villanova. 41 30. And Joe Frizz has turned him on here Ooh. in the City of Champions. Right. No sooner were we making a point that they had to come up with something. Did Nance get him? I'll tell you, that could have gone either way. Did Nance get him? If it did, history would be repeating itself last night. Where's that night. quiz play, by the way, Jim? Look at that play. He sees the defense moving in. Not only keeps it in bounds, but gets it down for ahead of Russell Todd, who just finished it off. Shades of Bob Cousy behind the back, oh, flying oh. out of bounds. That is four on Nance, who did the very same thing last night. Three in the first half. His fourth early in the second. Only this time, Catlett has taken him out of the ball game. He wants to save him for a little bit here. And he's going to be replaced uh, by a Sapansky. No, no, that's not Sapansky. That's Noah Moore. Noah Moore, right. Noah Moore in the ball game. Noah, sophomore from Parkersburg, West Virginia, 6'8", 200 pounder. Villanova by a dozen, now by 13. You see they did that time. Here, West Virginia cut it to 11, and Zinkowitz, the smart, he went to the hoop with the basketball. They were going to pull up and take a 20-foot jump shot. Take it to the basket. Take it to the basket. That way you got your shot at picking up the free throw if the shot misses. Joe Frizz. Oh, he's getting hot. Frizz. And it's 43-32, so Frizz has been responsible for the last six Mountaineer points. Two outside shots and a great pass. And it's 43-32, Bob. Fine shooter with great range, three-point range, uh, if he were in the NBA. Somewhat, again, we see Collins. We spoke about that, how well Pannone creates the space when he posts up. Very important. You don't stand up straight, but you split out. Makes it very difficult for the defensive man uh, to get around and give you any kind of overplay. And Pannone does that extremely well. Picked up the third foul on Collins. Good point. Three on Phil Collins, 43-32, 11-point lead for Villanova. We're in the second half, just underway, 17-15 to play in regulation. See, they got to put pressure on Villanova here, Jim, because they've gone inside very effectively. Because you see, they're doing exactly what they want. I was just just like in practice. Uh, you know, they're, they're sitting on a uh, an 11-point lead. They're looking to go inside. They finally do. 
What a move. Well, they're just toying with it. They've got to come out and put pressure on that ball. Bradley from Pinon, and it's 45-32. Villanova by 13, and that's exactly how many points Mr. Bradley has, 13. 16.40 to play in the game. Todd inside. They tried to go to Noah Moore, and he has fouled. Howard may have gotten him. If Howard got him, that would be his third foul. Here's that offensive discipline we were talking about, an unselfish play. Look at that movement. They get it inside, but Pannone passes off the, up the shot because he wants to give Bradley a better one, and that's what wins basketball games for teams on any level. Donnie Gibson comes in, and he replaces Todd. Villanova by 13. Foul on the pass off. Oh, he should have shot it. Should have shot it, James, huh? Yes, he heard the whistle. So. He still had the ball. He could have, because uh, that takes a lot of poise. And Lowe's Moore certainly has that. But he passed off. When you hear the whistle, let it fly somehow. It's good. Granger had that last foul. That was his second. It was Grizz again. Pinot with the rebound. Grizz trying to steal. Granger, Sparrow. Trying to get it inside. Knocked out of bounds by Noah Moore. Moore has been very active since he came in there. He's a big guy, 6'8". Well, that time he overpassed, believe it or not. You know, it's a week. We commented on the unselfish Villanova play a minute ago. But actually what decides, the defense keys when you pass and when you shoot. If the defense is off, you must shoot. And that's a Granger shot. 16 minutes and five seconds of play in regulation. Villanova on their way. They lead by 13. Under 16 minutes to play in the game. Now they come back and Burroughs and let's set it up again. To the baseline, Traveler. Traveler called for Traveler. Oh, look at Raleigh. Look at Raleigh Massimino. He can't believe that call. Look at that. <laughs> Well, he's saying, what's going on here, coach? We got 10 turnovers yeah. for West Virginia, six for Villanova. There it was, ran that baseline and uh, ran over no more across the bus. Prospect. Collins. Good shot coming. It's amazing. Gibson way up in the air, yeah, but he but he's over the top again. Yeah. His second team stud. There's a timeout here in Pittsburgh with 15 and a half minutes to play in the championship game and the score. Villanova 45 and the Mountaineers of West Virginia 32. Here's to Broadway this Sunday night on TV2. Silver Lining, Sunday at 11.30 on TV2. Hi, I'm Wayne Van Dyke. And I'm Patrice King-Brown. We've got another great lineup of shows for you this week on Pittsburgh Today. You know, we really do. On Monday, we're going to talk about women who are having second thoughts about all these diets. That's right. On Tuesday, we're going to show you how to sell yourself and get your way every time. Nash is Loretta Swit on Wednesday. Thursday, a new campus fad, Dungeons and Dragons. And Friday, hair removal. <laughs> so join us on Pittsburgh Today. <laughs> The pop and pageantry of collegiate basketball, Eastern 8 championship game here in Pittsburgh. Jim Carvelis, Bob Cousy, Eddie Alexander. Bob, you know, as you look at this young conference, you think about all the great, all the great NBA players that have played for schools that are in this conference. And of course, obviously, when you look at West Virginia, you got to think of the great Jerry West. And you have to think of the hot rod Hunleys and the rod thorns. But uh, what about, uh, for instance, UMass had a player uh, a couple of years ago by the name of Dr. Dr. J. J. Not Serving. too shabby. You've heard of him? <laughs> Norm Nixon, local local youngster, who's right. doing pretty well for the Lakers. From Duquesne, locally, there's been a lot of them. Bailey, now drafted number one by the Seattle Sonics, the world champions. And this conference will continue to produce outstanding players. Bradley missing, banging off the boards. Karen is in there now. 
Garen is up front with Pannon again. And Bradley, here's Joe Frizz, go to Collins. Big front line for Villanova. Dangerous they, pass, yep. they got away with it. A weak pass, but Gibson gets another shot at it. And Pannon reached in and fouled him. Pannon reached in and got him. Dangerous pass by Frizz. Let's, let's take a peek at that play again. Joe Frizz is going to throw the alley-oop over the defense. Uh, with an active team like Villanova, that's a tough pass to get through. They get away with it. Gibson takes a hook. He probably should have brought it in straight to the basket. All right, back to the live action. Bradley went over to sit down. That's two fouls on Pannon, by the way. Aaron Howard back in for Villanova. I tell you, that's an active zone. That's an active oh, yeah. zone Villanova's playing. Quick hands, good lateral movement. They say you don't play the D with the hands, but with the feet. And watch those kids. Boy, what? Watch them shift and go laterally. They get into the passing lanes well. They keep their hands up. Make it difficult for you to swing the ball. Yep. Good, good basketball team. Joe Frizz from Perryopolis, Pennsylvania, not far from Pittsburgh. Noah Moore. Nice little 17 foot jump shot. And it's 45 34, West Virginia down by 11. First two points for no more. Well, as they say, they needed that one, James. Again, a critical point. They can't allow it to get up much over 15 for obvious reasons. They've got to start chipping away at that lead. Ranger from 16, and a rebound to Collins. Lowe's more over the basketball. This place is turning on again. Frizz open. Oh. Go Frizz, and it's a nine-point Villanova lead now. And the Mountaineers come battling back in Pittsburgh. Here comes West Virginia. Frizz triggering the uh, offensive explosion here. Eight points for Frizz. Six of them here in the second half. Nice pass. Great pass to Sparrow from Granger. What a beautiful play by. Absolutely. Just a little give and go through the middle. That's old New York City basketball. The way we played it more years ago than I'd like to tell you about. Nice Sparrow. Play. Now has 10 points. That's a 47-36 game. Villanova on top. Bill Frizz has come alive in the second half. Jay Alexander saw his parents outside. They're, out, they're at the game tonight. The old town of Coriopolis is out here, I think. Nice pass inside. Good movement in the ball by West Virginia. Moore. Moore. And the rebound came to Howard. And Villanova has the basketball just under 13 minutes to play in the game. Thorough. They slow it up again. They get under control as they look over at Riley Massimino. She's hold it up. Let's play ball. One on one basketball. Inside. No. Good. Good on muscle. Losing the body again, Bob, to protect himself from the defender. Beautiful muscle move. Sparrow fakes the drive on the isolation there. Then runs the nice bounce pass. Pannon, Pannon, excuse me, has rolled low, gotten a good position. Then it's just a muscle job. I mean, he brings Gibson to the basket. Doesn't get the three-pointer, but did everything else. Bob, another thing he did, he maneuvered the defensive player under the basket so he could take some of his uh, yeah. some of his range away from possibly blocking the shot. Noah Moore has hit his second jump shot, and it's 49-38. Villanova's lead is 11. Still anyone's game. They're making a lot of noise here. Most of these fans are West Virginia fans for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's close. Secondly, it's very American to be for the underdog. And how much the call going to be? Oh, charging on Sparrow. Charging against Rory Sparrow. That'll be his second foul. And there's a timeout. Time out with 12-10 to play in the ball game. The championship here in Pittsburgh to score. Villanova 49 and West Virginia coming back with 38. Mark and it's been ages. Can I buy it? Allow me. Two Michelob lights. Michelob makes a light beer. Perfect. The rich, full-bodied taste of Michelob light. Compare it to any beer you like. You always did go first class. Your ticket to San Francisco. Thank you. San Francisco? You too? Michelob Light. Compare the taste to any beer you like. Yeah. 
Can you feel a difference between the 19 and 3 quarter cent Vic shaver and a Track 2? We went to the Cheeks of America to check it out. No difference. I can't tell the difference. Uh, to me, there's absolutely no difference. In our test, 58% found the Bic Shave equal to or better than Track 2s. Yet four Bic Shavers are an incredible 79 cents. Why spend more? Most men we tested felt. No difference. What about the price? Big difference. There's that last charging call on Rory Sparrow. Hal Grossman, the underneath official. Makes the call. He gets the step on Lowe's Moore, but Gibson alertly drops down from the high post and picks up the charge. Good call. Farrow didn't like it, but these officials, by the way, you know, we had a shaky one last night. These officials tonight have done an outstanding job in a, uh, obviously, a pressure game, emotional pitch uh, extremely high by both teams. They've really kept it under control, and they've called a minimum of fouls. Absolutely. You're right. There haven't really been that many fouls called. Last night, we had a free throw oh, shooting barrage. barrage. Absolutely. But uh, good job by the three men tonight. Well, you'd think it'd be the other way around. You'd think that in the semifinals, the teams would be a little looser. Maybe the final game, they'd be nervous. Well, maybe they are nervous, but they haven't played that way. These clubs have executed pretty darn well with all the pressure. And we have the NIT and NCAA invita invitations coming up. Tomorrow, oh, it is Noah Moore for defense. Yeah, Villanova trying to collapse a little on that 2-3 now, but they maintain pressure on the ball on the outside. Obviously, they want to sit on this lead. Kind of a tough shot, I know, but he hit two from the yeah. outside. He's got some confidence. Villanova for the basketball, 11-point lead, 11 and a half minutes to play in the game. Jim Prevalence, Bob Cousy, Eddie Alexander. I want to give Eddie a lot of credit for his performances on the shows, but also he keeps outstanding, impeccable statistics. Thank you, Eddie. 11-18 to play now. I thought you were, gonna, you were talking about his dress. He's an impeccable well, that, dresser as well. That's true, too. And a foul on Joe Frizz. The epitome of sartorial splendor. Oh, right, Edward? <laughs> Whatever that means. I can't believe it's been, he's been speechless for so long. It's got to be a Guinness record uh, West Virginia is making its move defensively by the way they've abandoned the 2-3 and they're going pressure man to man they're pressuring the ball and trying to overplay oh they almost had a turnover out of that man to man posture those more just couldn't quite find the handle Sinkowitz the story I promised you a few minutes ago was born with a deformity in his foot kind of a club foot in order to overcome that he's constantly working in fact they tell me a practice after practice he's constantly running up and down the stadium stairs even you know, I mean even to this day Sinkowitz from the outside and they say he's just a marvelously dedicated athlete Woo! here comes Lowe's Moore the great athletes how about that guy Lowe's Moore the senior He's from Mount Vernon, New York, he's got a dozen points, Bob. Yeah, been extremely quiet. Those are his first two points this half. He had 10 at the half. First basket, obviously, uh, would help the West Virginia cause if he heated up. Bradley driving, no call. Woo. He is physical, to say the least. I don't know whether it was, should have been a charge or a block, but there was a collision there. Block and a foul. Howard. Got the ball and also a piece of Lowe's Moore. That's four on Howard. And they're up on their feet in this building and at the bench there, the West Virginia bench. There's no quitting in these Mountaineers, I'll tell you that, and Villanova knows it. As we mentioned, uh, West Virginia had a little bit, bit of a disadvantage at the free throw line. They're only shooting 69% from the field, but Lowe's Moore is not one of them. Lowe's is shooting almost 78%, so good free throw shooter. It's 49-41 now. Villanova's lead has been cut to eight. Lowe's Moore, Mount Vernon, New York. A lot of great basketball players from there. Ray Williams of the Knicks. Gus Williams of the Sonics. Jerry Furlow's from, uh, from there, now playing with the Utah Jazz. The McCray boys, great basketball players in Louisville, also from Mount Vernon. And you can put Lowe's Moore on that, high on that list. Our director Jack Simon gave us a very good stat. We're going to give you in just a moment. A foul called on Collins. 
Collins has Bradley that time with all the pressure on him did what Sinkowitz did before he went turned and went to the hoop yeah that uh, that was well hey was too far I was gonna say that was a little questionable uh, from this vantage point but we're 30 feet away obviously how Grossman on top of the play Collins is fourth foul that's where it becomes a key yes Nance the other big kid for West Virginia already sitting down with four so uh, Lowe's Moore needs two more points to set an Eastern League tournament record for points. Two more points. With 9.53 to play in the game. Even well, more importantly, his club is down by only seven now. They were down by 15 in the second half. Yeah. After Canone hit the opening jump shot to start the second half, Villanova led by 13 at the half. Now Villanova trying to regain some composure. West Virginia is fired up, and they're fired up defensively as well. And uh, what's the call? It's going to be traveling. Traveling. And that's going over now. A little bit of trouble, Bob. Yep. It looked like the same play as the time before. That's what I thought he was going to call on the Collins foul, a walking violation. West Virginia making their move, and the man-to-man -man defense has so far took a uh, good comeback for them. It's got them going offensively as well, and it's rattled Villanova just slightly. All right, let's see what happens. Seven point lows more. Boom! And there it is. They tied the record. But it's a five-point game. That's the important stat now. Five-point game and a timeout. Timeout by Villanova. And they're going bananas here in Pittsburgh. Watch the Lowe's Moore basket that tied the tournament record. And a timeout called. 9.07 to play in regulation. Villanova, 49. The Mountaineers climbing back with 44. They said it couldn't be written. The book that hit America like a runaway locomotive. For the life of me, Foster, your obsession with that book escapes me. It's only a catalog. <laughs> The book that's helping America find a better way to live from the Consumer Information Center of the U.S. government. What do you find in that catalog? Something you could never give me, Lillian. More than 200 fact-filled federal publications listed inside. More than half free. Booklets and home and car repair, weight control, keeping household records. I've read them all. To be the man you want me to be. The book you have to read, the price you won't believe, it's free. The new Consumer Information Catalog. Just write New Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. That's New Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Send for the book. Don't wait for the movie. Nine oh seven to play in regulation. 49-44, Villanova's 15-point lead is down to five. Nellie King. Eddie Alexander, you work a lot with uh, Nellie, don't you? Or SID, as a matter of fact, you know he was one of the co-voices of the Pirates for years, and Nellie King doing a fine job at Duquesne University. All right, Bob, let's see what they do. Do they get the ball down to Pannon? Is that what they're going to try to do here? Well, anytime you got man-to-man -man and you got that kind of muscle, that's where you want to go inside, and that's why... Especially with a kid with his moves. They go to Pannon, and the freshman picks up his 18th point of the game, and Villanova's up by seven. And that obviously is a stopper. Let's see if Nance, Nance is back well. in the game. Noah Moore got over the top of Alex Bradley. His first foul, but I believe it uh, puts him over the bonus watch uh, West Virginia tries to retaliate by going low themselves a little high position by and a, and a quick move that's a the quickest very move quick I've move seen in years. and a quick shot <laughs> players are getting Both quicker foul. and quicker Woo. all the time God bless it <laughs> these players I'll tell you I know they're getting better but I didn't know they're getting yeah, that much quicker they're getting any quicker than that these games that last about 20 minutes all right Bradley well, Very cool at the foul line. He's got 14. Obviously a timely uh, timeout by Raleigh Massimino. Got the troops uh, 
reorganized there. They picked up four points. Took a little of the pressure off the Villanova. Nine-point lead. Oh, you believe that? Ooh. Sparrow just turned around and said, are you kidding me? I had that shot blocked. And it went in the hole. Sparrow couldn't believe it. What a reaction on his face. Incredible. I don't blame him. 53-46, seven-point lead for Villanova. And now Sparrow going against inside. And I'll tell you, Mr. Bradley has shown his head here tonight. Hasn't he a big game, Bob? The defense, I'm, well, I'm not sure. They're, they're working against a couple of kids that are super, but, uh, oh, Collins, that'll be all, I believe. Collins, and that was an obvious push. Yep, no and question. Catlett has lost a very important player, Gail Catlett. I, now, he can't be complaining at the official because that might have been the most obvious call yeah, of the night. Very flagrant foul. He used that inside hand. That generally is what you tell the big guys if you're going to push. Go with the inside hand, you know, the traffic side where it's a little tougher to see because we've got three officials out here tonight, so they get all the angles covered. So uh, Bill Collins, a 6'9 sophomore from Palos Heights, Illinois, is fouled out. He had two points, but he made a strong contribution on the boards, and he will be missed. Look at this meeting of the board at half court. Gail Catlett having a uh, few words with Gene Fedatori and Raleigh Massimino. Right there to make sure nothing said that he doesn't overhear. Collins checks out with nine rebounds. Big guy did a good job. Two points. All right, Gail Catlett is still discussing it. I don't know if, well, I assume he's discussing the foul, but uh, I agree with you completely. It looked like an obvious foul. Yeah, he just pushed his arm away, as you said, Bob. Now we started to uh, we started to say Villanova has really done an outstanding job here, going inside to Pannon and Bradley. Uh, it's hard to tell. You know, they're bringing that guy over from the weak side quickly. He just runs from the weak side along the baseline, gets the position when they run it into that right corner. Hard to say whether the defense is letting down a little bit. They should, really should be anticipating that and fighting him for that low position. Well, early in the game. Villanova was hitting the outside shot when they were collapsing that to cut off the passing lanes. Then they can run them out a little bit. They may have to collapse a little bit and, and make Villanova beat them from the outside. And a big rebound by Bradley. Let's see what they do defensively. Moore, the foul. Fouling Howard. I'll tell you, Bradley just tore that defensive rebound off there. Got it down. Finds Howard, who streaked down floor. Little off balance. He still was alive with the ball. Little fake, and then a dribble would have brought him in there, I think. So he rushed the shot, but got lucky and picked up the foul. Howard from the foul line will go again. Four points for Howard. 57-46. Villanova by 11. And now by a dozen. Karen, Marty Karen comes in the game for Villanova, replaces Howard. Starting to put the muscle on that back line of that 2-3 zone now. He's got the lead back up to 12, so he wants to make sure he controls that defensive board. Karen, Pannon, and Bradley, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you, Three West Virginia guys. got it down, Bob, the five at 49-44. Riley called a timeout. They've outscored West Virginia 9-2 since that timeout. Rose Moore keeps it alive. 20 now. Moore has exceeded the tournament record. He tied it when he got his 16th point. He set the tournament record when he got his 18th. And now a foul has been called against Villanova. Marty Karen. Rose Moore now has 20 points in this ball game. West Virginia trails by 10. 13,181. They're, they're just shy of 30,000 in this building the last right, two nights. You. That's incredible. You know, with uh, with Pitt and Duquesne both eliminated, that's uh, incredible response by the basketball fan Dan Pittsburgh. No doubt about it. Timeout with 7.16 to play in the championship game in Pittsburgh. The score, Villanova 58 and West Virginia 48. This Bud's for the United States Budweiser Bobsled Team. This Bud's for you. 
Yeah, Budweiser's proud to sponsor the AAU bobsled team this winter. Here's to you guys from the King of Beers. This Bud's for you. It's Coleco's Electronic Hockey, Electronic Basketball, Electronic Football. You play against the computer or head-to-head. Head. Head-to-head football, offense against defense. You control the run, the pass, but he controls the blitz. Head-to-head -head hockey, pass, slap shot. His goalie tries for the save. Head-to-head -head basketball, you gotcha. fake, go up for the shot. Can he block it? Now play basketball, hockey, football, against the computer or... Head-to-head! Head-to-head electronic sports by Coleco. All right, we're back here in Pittsburgh at the Eastern 8 Championship game and watch Alex Bradley, who's, who's also set a record, Bob. Yes, he has, and boy, he's done it the hard way, a little tougher than the shooting record. He's done it on, under the boards with the iron and, uh, and all the big bods there, although uh, he's no uh, skeleton himself. I'll tell no. you, he takes up a little room under there. Well, we've given Riley Massimino a lot of credit. He deserves it, but... Let's, let's also give credit to this fine coaching staff from Villanova, Pete Gillen and uh, Mitch Bonaguro and Michael Mucci. They've done a great job. And a lot of times, you know, they don't get the credit they deserve. Not only that, but uh, there isn't a head coach in the country that uh, wouldn't agree that it's not a one-man job today, I'll tell you. Everybody contributes. And here's... I'll tell you what, Noah Moore's got a nice touch, doesn't he? 58-50. Villanova's lead is eight. And pressure now. Pressure from a West Virginia club that's trying to pull off another upset. They beat Duquesne in the first round of this tournament. They beat Rutgers last night by 11, trying to knock off the number one seeded team, Villanova. They trail by eight with six and a half minutes to play in the game. Three big guys just picking for each other across the lane. Bradley goes across, picks the... Uh... Pannon, Pannon picks for Cowan. Now Cowan comes, muscles it up. They when they get the good shots, don't they? When the pressure is on, they really have enough discipline to get the good percentage shot. That's where you win basketball game, in the trenches, under the hoop. Not on the outside. 1-3-1 one, one zone by Villanova. There's your first defensive change by them. They normally like to trap out of this. Frizz, side. Joe Frizz from the outside. And he keeps the Mountaineers in. They're down by eight. Jill Frizz has 10 points, eight in the second half. There's the zone pressure by West Virginia now. Their first attempt at it. They've been man-to-man -man the last four or five minutes. There's the trap on the ball. Sparrow's out of the game now. They have Granger. No, check it. Sparrow's in the game. They have Granger in there on the back line with them. Two good they ball handlers. Karen up front with Pannone and Bradley. There's Lowe's Moore. Out of Bradley. Played by Todd. Pannon has the good position low, but they missed him. Good job by the defense. 5 8 to play in the game. Ooh, good good defensive play, but Moore, and it's stolen by Pannon, who's fouled. What an alert play by that freshman, Pannon. West Virginia was about to go the other way with a three-on-one break, and Pannone turned it yeah. around. Ranger takes it into the middle, but exposes it. And the quick hands by the West Virginia defense. There it is. There's the slap. Noah Walk, Noah Moore, excuse me, went to dribble it before getting control, and that's a no-no in the traffic. Exactly. Get it before you put it to the ground. Pannone misses his foul shot. Russell Todd picks up his third, by the way. This is again. Pannone's just a couple. Pannone knocked it away again. Pannone knocked it away again Ooh. and it went out of bounds. That's two great plays he's made back to back. Big break for uh, Villanova there. First Sikowitz comes back for Villanova, Bob. All right, first two free throws missed by... Uh, by the big guy, Pannone. Villanova's only missed four all night long. Granger with Frizz on him. Sinkowitz and Sparrow. So again, three guards for Villanova. It looks like they're starting to spread 
Let's take a peek, yeah. They've gone to their 3-2 uh, offense, keeping the middle open. He's gone to the three guards, the penetrators and the ball handlers, good free throw shooters. So, Eight-point lead for Villanova. Yeah. A lot of time to go, four and a half minutes. They may also be trying to lull them to sleep. I, I think well, they're gonna look for some in the back door or maybe get yeah. some room and, and take the shot. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. They want to make them think they're still going to a hoop, but they're looking for the foul. However, once again, good defensive pressure creates the five-second jump and jump ball violation. Raleigh didn't agree with the call. Gale did. 4-17, we have a jump ball coming up. Howard comes back in the game for Villanova. Let's talk about those fine assistants from West Virginia. Gary McPherson and Bob Smith. Lanny Van Eman and the uh, graduate assistant coach Lou Pelliccioni. Uh, both of these coaches have done just superlative jobs this year. Gail Catlett, as we said, after a slow start, really brought this team along. You know, you can't time it that way, but uh, yeah. obviously you have a choice between a bad half and a good half. You want the good half to be the latter part. Yeah, and he, uh, and he, he was a good enough coach to keep the players confidence in themselves. Uh, they were four and six in the conference. But they won five in a row and pulled off some upsets, and they're not out of this one yet either. Woo! Sparrow. Oh, look at that rebound by Jones. Jones. Jones in the game now. Here's the one-hander, yes. 60-54, six-point lead for Villanova. A lot of time to go in eternity, 355. 22 for Lowe's Moore. That's McCoy, by the way, number 23, not Greg Jones. He gets a hand right, on Diego it. Diego McCoy. And fouled in the act of shooting, I believe, is Bradley in the act of shooting. Here it is. Good pressure by Joe Frizz again, leaving the ground. You see McCoy get a hand on it, but he just deflects it to Bradley, who quickly muscles it in there, picks up the foul. I'll be right, that was Diego McCoy. He's a freshman, 6'2", 185 pounder from Spingarn High School in Washington. Spingarn's produced some basketball players, one of the name of Dave Bing, and a guy by the name of Elgin Baylor. 61-54, seven-point lead for Villanova. Bradley at the line looking for his 19th point. He's got it. 19 for Bradley, who set a rebounding record. This man, Lowe's Moore, has set a record for scoring in the Eastern 8 tournament. What performance tonight. Bradley hasn't committed a foul tonight. He's created some. Frizz on the inside. Will they give him the hoop? No. No. Now in the NBA, he's got a basket yeah. there for continuation. I thought he might have given him that one anyway. Let's take a pick. You're going to see him slide through this opening here under control. That's the way you want to penetrate if you have a choice so that if you do get by that front line of the D, you can do exactly what uh, Joe did and get a good control shot off. Frizz got the roll. Frizz a senior. Went to Moon High School in Caracolis, Pennsylvania. Frizz has 12 points. He's got 10 of them here in the second half. It's a six-point lead for Villanova. They break the press. The single oh, it's Go team. away, yep. West Virginia kids doing a fine job defensively, but I'll tell you, when you've got the defense spread this way, and you've got some ball handlers uh, and poised kids like Granger, Sparrow, and Sinkowitz in there. It's going to be a tough chore for them to get a hand on the ball without fouling, at least. Rory Sparrow has risen to the occasion tonight. I'll tell you, nobody's choked here tonight, Bob. All the players that you expected to play well throughout the, the season have played well tonight, Bob. Extremely well played game on both parts. Joe Frizz uh, gives the man the step and then comes in from behind. Good move. They, they really can't afford. They've got to gamble despite the fact that Villanova shoots so well from the line. 
246, uh, six points down. They've got to gamble that they're going to, you know, maybe miss one or two and uh, help them get back uh, into it. Here. Okay, you got it. I got it. Taking his place on Tom Sinkowitz. Go! Mike Sinkowitz. He's replaced now. Here's Larry They go back to the big lineup and bring him here in Howard. The big one and one. They're all big now in the one and one. With 246 to play in the game. Villanova leads by seven. Two years ago, the same two clubs in this building. Playing for the championship, Villanova won it by four. Almost lost that rebound. Here's Diego McCoy, the freshman from Washington, D.C. All right, time to play. There it is in the lower right-hand part of your screen, 235. Frizz, what a oh, shot! Lord. That's a playground shot. What a big shot. Five-point lead by Villanova. And Frizz has 14 now. Bradley. Gets rid of it. Thought about going to the hoop, and then Raleigh, I didn't hear Raleigh say, get it out. And timeout called by Villanova. It's a five-point game. The last time they got it down to five, a timeout was called by Raleigh, and they ran off nine points, nine of the next 11 points, Bob. Well, you don't have, obviously, the same situation here, James, uh, with 218. The last time they called it, of course, Raleigh just said, hey, will you turkeys get that ball inside to your muscle and let's get this thing back up where it's safe. And that's what they did. They went into Bradley and uh, Pannon, got the lead back up to 12. West Virginia, there you see Dale Catlett uh, with the diagram board. Bob, uh, wow, that's been a big change in coaching in the old days, know it. I mean, yeah. you subscribe to this. Uh, the, the, Not really, but that's, you know, everybody's doing it, and uh, maybe I'm just an old-timer. What I'm saying is that I would rather go to something that I've worked on in practice uh, for God only knows how many times and just, just say, hey, go to Z3 or B1. Here's what we do. In other words, all of this is covered. I don't think you want to throw too much new stuff. There are occasions, obviously, you've got a fast-changing game where you have to implement, you know, at the moment, or, or uh, improvise. improvise, rather, at the moment. So I can see it doing, but not too much of it, Jim, you know? Don't don't throw something new at him with 218 to go That's and right. all this pressure if That's you right. can go to something they've worked on in practice. Wow, well, pretty good shooting percentages for a big game, right, when you know there's going to be tension. And with the extreme defense that we've had on both the... Uh, Parts, uh, both by both units, rather. Uh, that's exceptional shooting. Uh, Villanova, as they've done the last couple of minutes, are keeping it spread. They're keeping it in the hands of their good free throw shooters so that uh, West Virginia can no longer afford to waste too much time. They've got to gamble and go for the ball. They would prefer to shoot the weaker free throw shooters, but all three of those kids, they say it good. Now they're trapping the ball to try to get the ball low to the bigger men who are weaker free throw shooters. So good move on the part of West Virginia. All right, 2.05 to play in the game. Five point lead for Villanova. Keeping it spread, making the defense work and making it difficult for them to double team. There he is, back door. That's what they were looking for. That's all I would say. It's really effective, Bob. If you can kind of let them see that you have back door with somebody, they did it perfectly. I say that the West Virginia kids are trying to trap, but by keeping the offense spread, they've got to go too far to get to the ball. As you can see, the underneath man generally is not the man you want to leave. No more went up to trap and the guard at half court, and Bradley just had a waltz in. Now it's 65-58, a big hoop in this game with a minute 50 to go. Alex Bradley, a three-point play. 22 for Bradley. Pannon has 18. They're the top two scores. Joe Frizz. What a way to go out. Joe Frizz gets his 16th point of the game. And it's a 66-60 game with a minute 41. Still enough time left, Bob Cousy. I'll tell you, Joe was only two for nine last night, but that kid has really done a job here in the second half. Uh, hit a lot of clutch shots. Uh, and that has, has slowed ball. We said we thought Villanova might contain him somewhat because he got 26 against them. There's the, uh, the uh, what is that score? 66. 
60. 60. Okay, 60. I'm sorry. That is the uh, correct score. We thought they might somewhat neutralize Moore. He got 26 against them in Morgantown earlier. And uh, he came in here, got 27, I believe, against Duquesne the first game, 26 last night. Uh, so he has really had the hot hands. Got all, got started a little slowly, but I'll tell you, he's still, uh, he's still got himself 22 here. So, Bob, I, I, I keep the, go ahead. All right, just looking, Joe Quiz is 7 for 13 in the second half. Lowe's more 10 for 17, so despite the aggressive Villanova D, you know, they've both done a good job. I, was, I keep thinking about these uh, former uh, players from these schools that are in the NBA. We've got Bob Lanier from St. Bonaventure. Of course, Tom Stiff from there. What about Cy Hugo Green from Duquesne? Dick Ricketts, the same era. Yep. That's right, Dick Ricketts. Chuck Cooper, an old, uh, an old roommate of mine. Chuck was the... Chuck was the first black kid to come into this league many, many That's years right. ago, 1950. All right, time remaining, a minute 35. Ooh, they almost had it. I don't... Yeah, okay. they're going to call it on Diego McCoy. Yep. Diego McCoy. Oh, Diego McCoy. All right, that sends Pannone to the foul line. Well, that's really not bad strategy, though. He, he's, he missed his last two at the line. Maybe he's thinking about that. Yeah, the kids who are in there now, he is the weakest free throw shooter. But 69% isn't bad for a big guy. That's right. John Canone from Wethersfield, Connecticut. Yes, sir. What a game this freshman has played. 19 for Canone. Two from the line. That's an eight-point lead for Villanova. Lowe's Moore. Closing out a career here. You never know. West Virginia might get a post-tournament bid. This one isn't over yet either. Look at that rebound oh, by Bradley. Wow. Really have to be impressed with his game. Yes, sir. Rory Sparrow. Again, keeping it spread. They're going to keep the ball moving now to make it more difficult for... West Virginia to foul. Granger is fouled by Diego McCoy. With a minute four to play in the game, Villanova by eight. Well, the fans are starting to sense what's obvious. A good, aggressive effort on the part of West Virginia by falling just a bit short against a very poised, well-disciplined, strong, powerful Villanova team. All right, no more. Got that rebound. It's still an eight-point game with a minute to play in the game. Joe Frizz. Look at him. Look oh, at Bradley man. again. He just owns the boards Ooh. now. He owns the boards. He's got nine rebounds. Coming up on 42 seconds to play in the game. And no more. Fouled. Howard. Aaron Howard goes to the foul line. He's only a sophomore. He'll be around a couple more years from Northern New Jersey. Roy Sparrow's a senior. Granger is only a freshman. You know, Pannone is only a freshman. Kit Malkin will play for a few minutes and is a good one. The Bradley's a junior. They'll have him back. Sinkowitz is a junior. They're going to be tough again. 70-60 ball game. Villanova on top with 40 seconds to play in the game. Again, it's been an outstanding tournament for the Eastern Eight, both on the court and in the seats. Great crowds, close to 30,000 the last two nights. And it's been an artistic success, I think you'll agree, as Raleigh Massimino still isn't sure he's going to win. <laughs> Working to the end. Now he is running away. He is now. He's got his arms up in the air. With 18 seconds, it's a 12-point lead. Diego McCoy. Boy, can he jump or what? Ball tipped around. Moore gets it. Comes inside. West Nobody West will follow him. West Virginia kids hang tough. I'll tell you. And they call a timeout with six seconds down by 10. <laughs> Raleigh Massimino's group has done it. They've won the Eastern 8 championship 
And boy, do they deserve it. Taking nothing away from as gritty a West Virginia team as you could ever expect to see. Coming back as far as they have to even get to this position. They've not disappointed one single Mountaineer fan, Bob. Now, and I'll tell you, it's the type of game that you uh, enjoy having for a championship because it wasn't a case of one team playing badly and the other team capitalizing on it. Uh, as I think we stated once or twice, you know, a fine effort really by West Virginia, simply uh, not good enough to, uh, to beat an exceptional effort by, by, frankly, a better team. And of course, the, the, uh, the record indicates this coming in, you know, Villanova, uh, having been tested with a good, strong schedule, comes in 20 and seven, and uh, 21 and seven, actually, after last night. So uh, they're a fine basketball team. And I'll tell you, they have a, the chemistry is right and the blend is right. A lot of role players who complement each other extremely well. I mean, they have shooters, they have muscle, they have outside shooters, they have good inside men. Their defense is, uh, is alert and quick. They, I'll tell you, they're a good basketball team. Six seconds to play in the tournament and a foul. Let's also say some kind words for a gentleman who has worked so very, very hard. Leland Bird, who's the commissioner of the Eastern Eight, himself a former great basketball player at West Virginia. He's done a marvelous job, Bob, in, in heading up this young, fledgling league that has so much potential. Bob Steiner is the director of uh, public relations and sports information and all the SIDs and uh, around the league. For the great job they've done, the ADs, the assistant ADs. This league, I, I believe, is really on the threshold, Bob. They've got some great young players in this league, and the enthusiasm is tremendous. Well, I'm sure Leland was rewarded when he saw the crowds here for this tournament. That's what it, all the work is all about. And this tournament is now officially over. And Villanova's Wildcats. Have shown some great class in winning here, 74 to 62. A happy rally, Massimino. Dale Cantlin and his West Virginia Mountaineers have nothing to be ashamed of. They were tremendous as well. Eddie and Bob Cousy and I will be back in a moment. Weekends were made. Nickelodeon. It's for real. Well, that calls for something special. Hey, Chico. Yeah. Michelob all around. Make your own weekend a little more special with a smooth and mellow taste of Michelob. Michelob? What's the occasion? I've met the woman. Again? Weekends were made for Michelob. Yeah. Can you feel a difference between the 19 and 3 quarter cent big shaver and a track two? We went to the Cheeks of America to check it out. No. Lowe's Moore, the man of the hour, the most valuable player of the tournament, this fine senior from West Virginia, played a tremendous ball game, and who knows, maybe his career isn't over, maybe a bid to the NIT. Well, not, not only that, but I was thinking you're going to see him on your basketball screens across the country, possibly as an NBA performer uh, next year also, Jim. Well, I want to personally thank DVD Productions, Dudley Freeman, and Madison Square Garden Sports, Joe Cohn, and Jack Kasuris also down here for this big game tonight. Bob Cousy, of course, a great all-around, great, great, great basketball player, and he did a wonderful job commentating throughout the year on our games, and, of course, fast Eddie Alexander and experience Eddie and it was great working with you, an outstanding pro. This is Jim Carvelis. I, I was very happy to be able to be a part of this package late in the season, and we're looking forward to bigger and better things in the future. Hope you enjoyed tonight's game, and we'll be looking for you soon. Now the final score again, Villanova 74, West Virginia 62. The Eastern 8 Basketball Championship is brought to you in part by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Eastern 8 Basketball and the Eastern 8 Championships is a presentation of Madison Square Garden Television and DVD Associates Incorporated through the facilities of the Hughes Television Network. People and their problems. 
That is what the Urban League is all about. By addressing the needs of the people, the League helps to fit everyone into the picture. We have the information and resources to help you find employment with the future, additional education and training, safe and decent housing, and health care that is accessible to all. We have been working for equal opportunity and people for more than 60 years. If you need help or want to help us put it all together, call the Urban League of Pittsburgh at 261-6010. Good morning and welcome to Sermonette. Join us as we take a few moments for these thoughts from Father Donald P. Breyer, Director of the Catholic Youth Ministry for the Diocese of Pittsburgh. There is a beautiful parable told about two seas in Palestine. One is fresh, abounding with fish. Greenery adorn its banks and dip their roots to drink of its waters. Children play near it and people and fishermen, just like in the time of Christ, enjoy its beaches. The River Jordan makes this sea with sparkling waters from the hills. Men build their houses near it, birds their nests, and every kind of life is happier because it is there. The River Jordan flows further south to another sea. There no fish can live, no vegetation, no song of birds or children's laughter. The air hangs heavy above its waters, which neither man nor beast can drink. Travelers choose another route and less on urgent business. What makes the difference in these two seas? It isn't the source. The same River Jordan feeds both. The terrain and the soil are basically the same. The difference is this. The Sea of Galilee receives but does not keep the waters of the Jordan. For every drop that flows into it, it lets another drop flow out. The other sea is shrewder, hoarding its income jealously. The Sea of Galilee gives and lives. The other sea gives nothing. It is called the Dead Sea. The peace prayer of St. Francis speaks to us of the meaning of this parable. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, pardoning that we are pardoned, dying that we are born to eternal life. Christ's entire earthly life was that of service, giving to his people even unto death. This message was continually on his lips in his parables, continually in his life as he lived it. He came to teach us how to live and how to die, that we might really live. He came to teach us not just how to die at the end of our life, but how to die daily to our own selfishness, which is sin. Only in this daily dying, in the giving of selves to our families, friends, neighbors, can we be free to live. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, then it produces much fruit. We can get so caught up in the daily problems of living and earning a living, we build a fence around ourselves for protection. We become a type of dead sea. Hoarding our income, not just money, but the gifts of ourselves, our energies, and our time. We can be like a grain of wheat wanting to stay in the protection of the granary or the bottle on the shelf. Without falling to the ground, it is useless to itself and others. Dramatically, we've seen this portrayed in the life of Howard Hughes, one of the richest men in the world who lived in isolation and died in his loneliness unmourned. He had so isolated himself for so long a time that in spite of his money, influence, and power, his life and death really didn't affect the lives of others. In reality, he died long before he was physically dead. May our lives never be useless, but let our prayer be today and every day. Lord, help me to strive daily to be a more loving, concerned, and sharing person so that I may truly live now and in eternity. This has been Sermonette. Our guest this morning has been Father Donald P. Breyer, Director of the Catholic Youth Ministry for the Diocese of Pittsburgh.
This has been another program transmission of KDKA-TV, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh's first television station. KDKA-TV is owned and operated by Westinghouse Broadcasting Company, Incorporated. We operate on Channel 2, 54 to 60 megahertz, with studios and offices located in Gateway Center in downtown Pittsburgh. KDKA-TV is an equal opportunity employer. We operate on a studio to transmitter microwave link with the assigned call letters of KUX-91. Speaking for the entire staff of KDKA-TV, we bid you all a very good night. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the wrath